Did you know that uncontrolled high blood pressure can lead to brain swelling and even blindness? That's why taking your blood pressure medication is so important. Yesterday, I presented the case of a 51-year-old man who came to the emergency department with several days of headaches and blurry vision. His wife eventually brought him to the emergency department when he began to become more and more confused. An MRI of his brain showed the classic findings of PRESS. PRESS? Posterior Reversible Encephalopathy Syndrome. Not the press that Cardi B talks about. His MRI of his brain is showing vasogenic edema in the subcortical white matter of the parietal and occipital lobes. You can also see it here. It's a classic finding of press. Let's talk about it because many of you guys got this answer incorrect. Oh, I love a good learning session. Posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome is a neurological disorder that is characterized by headaches, altered mental status, visual disturbance, and seizures. It develops typically acutely or subacutely over hours to days. Presentation often happens with acute uncontrolled high blood pressure. Like in our patient, he stopped taking his blood pressure medications and on presentation, his blood pressure was 210 over 96. There's two words in press that are sometimes a little tricky. First word is posterior because it often occurs in the parietal and occipital lobes, which are the posterior part of our brain that controls vision. However, it is not always isolated to that part of the brain. The second word is reversible because often we can reverse this condition by correcting the blood pressure, but in some cases it's not reversible and permanent brain damage can occur, including blindness. We classically associate it with uncontrolled hypertension, but there are other risk factors for developing this problem. Other associated conditions include preeclampsia and eclampsia in pregnancy, autoimmune disease including lupus, infection and sepsis, and even some forms of chemotherapy can lead to press. It's a syndrome that's often underdiagnosed, and I'm hoping that this video will bring some awareness. It happens in all ages, but it most commonly affects middle-aged women. Well, doctor, what's a pathophysiology? Why does this happen? Not 100% sure on what causes it, but we have some theories. One of those proposed mechanisms is dysregulation of cerebral autoregulation. Say what? Autoregulation in the brain is our brain's way of coping with variations in blood pressure. We can maintain a constant cerebral flow to our brain despite changes in our blood pressure and that is called autoregulation. Basically, we wanna maintain a constant flow of blood to our brain, so if the blood pressure is too high, our blood vessels constrict to reduce flow, or if the blood pressure is too low, our blood vessels will expand to increase flow. But if that's not correct and it's dysregulated, you can get too much flow to the brain, and that can cause swelling. So in cases of acute uncontrolled high blood pressure, the pressure to our brain goes up, we can't control it and that hydrostatic flow of increased blood to the brain will, will cause breakdown of the blood-brain barrier. That intravascular fluid within the blood vessels can extravasate into the brain tissue and cause the swelling. The theory as to why it happens just in the back part of the brain is that those blood vessels don't have the ability of autoregulation as well as other blood vessels in our brain. Posterior blood flow has less adaptive mechanisms to adapt to autoregulation, and that's why they're more affected than other parts of the brain. That theory has somewhat been challenged because not every patient with press has this uncontrolled high blood pressure. For some patients with normal blood pressure, but they've been on medications that are cytotoxic or even chemotherapy agents that can cause this problem to occur as well. And the hypothesis is that there's something toxic in these medications that can affect the blood-brain barrier of those same vessels. Layman's terms, something happens to those blood vessels in the back part of the brain to cause too much fluid to leak out of the blood vessels and cause the brain to swell. Remember, our occipital lobe is what controls our vision, and that's why a lot of patients manifest with visual disturbances. Headaches happen because the brain is swelling, as well as potentially seizures and even coma. To diagnose it, imaging is the gold standard. An MRI without contrast can diagnose this problem, and treatment is correcting the underlying problem, and it almost always is completely reversible. Correcting the blood pressure with IV medications is extremely important, but you don't want to lower the blood pressure all too fast because you can deplete blood flow to the brain, and that can cause a stroke. So it's got to be done very carefully. 
We often also treat these patients with anti-epileptic medications to treat and prevent seizures. In cases where the cause is eclampsia or preeclampsia, blood pressure control and anti-epileptics are extremely important as well as urgent delivery of the baby, usually by C-section. On the cases where a medication is causing it, obviously we want to remove that medication. Autoimmune cases like lupus, treatment with steroids, as well as medications to treat that disease are very important. This can be a life-threatening disease, so it's so important to diagnose this as early as possible. Delay in treatment can potentially cause permanent brain damage, stroke, and even death. Our patient's case, he was admitted to the intensive care unit and an IV medication to treat his blood pressure carefully was administered and within 24 hours, he became more lucid and was discharged home in just a few days. Of course, we taught him how important it is to take his blood pressure medications regularly. Another case of patient focused and compassionate care. I hope you guys learned something from this one. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.